coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll have highlights from Farm Fest, including a visit from Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue. I'll profile a young man who's doing double duty on the job front. Soil health, conservation, and biofuels were the focus of the EPA Regional Administrator's recent visit here in South Dakota. We'll take a look at a live safety demonstration specifically targeting youth in agriculture. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. This week we bring you the show from Farm Fest in Redwood County, Minnesota. The show provides a place for farmers to network and learn how to grow their operations. The 50-acre site showcases products, services, and technologies from over 500 exhibitors and also features product demos, activities for farm families, and the ever-popular educational sessions, which this year focused on hot issues like transportation, trade, and the farm economy. The double whammy of the trade war and a tough crop season have many lawmakers and farm groups concerned about losing farmers. Here at Farm Fest, that was the topic of a House Ag Committee listening session. Farmers from all sectors of agriculture told the panel and Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue, trade deals like USMCA and bringing an end to the trade war are the keys to turning around the farm economy. Get the trade wars behind it, get that settled. I mean, that's the number one thing. Because we, we were, even before this started, we were dealing with depressed prices because of global surpluses of grains. If they are going to have this trade war and we become casualties of it, uh, we need to be compensated for it. Uh, we can't keep uh, producing a crop and, and have no place to sell it and or at a, at a loss. The secretary says the administration feels agriculture's pain from the trade war and is sensitive to the loss of more farmers. And the government can't support uh, any business or every business in that way. What the president's done through the market facilitation, I think is the best we can do in order to help farmers survive. But even with the newest round of China trade retaliation, the administration isn't looking at additional help. There's no other intended plans there. The $16 billion market facilitation program is the plan for 2019. Uh, again, that's the current uh, situation. If President Trump has some other ideas, we'll talk to him, depending on what the market does for the rest of the year. Minnesota Governor Tim Wall says the fragile state of the farm economy is something he's closely monitoring. I'm concerned, and I think a lot of the debt we talked about in the 80s, uh, the banks own that. I think a lot of farmers have this debt now personally on them, and uh, that worries me. Farmers also expressed frustration with the ag labor crisis and this year's cropping disasters. House Ag Committee Chairman Colin Peterson joining us and listening session today about the farm economy. What do you think is the main thing that needs to be done to keep farmers from going out of business? Well, we have a farm bill that's in place. At the time we did it, I said I didn't think it was going to be adequate. And I think I'm right. But at this point, there's no political support to change it or money other than the facilitation panels. So we just have to monitor the situation and see what happens this winter. I think. We've, we've had a double whammy with the bad crop year, the trade war. Do you see an end to the trade war here with China anytime soon? You'd have to ask the people that are negotiating it. I did not agree with us getting involved in this in the first place. Do you think the MFP payments are going to be adequate well, or I think be more enough? Than the damage. I think the MFP payments are more than we were damaged in the China market. But we got other problems besides that. You know. Including? Well, I mean, the, the, the market going away for uh, uh, soybean meal in China because the hogs dying and, you know, a lot of other issues. Uh, so, you know, I had an economist send me something across the desk last week who claims that um, we're going to have low prices for nine years. So what do you think is going to happen then? And the new dairy program looks like it's going to be helpful to keep dairy farmers in business? It is helpful if people would figure out how to use it. They've got this thing that it's all about how much money comes from the government. And that's not what this is about. This is about a safety net. If people can't get it through their heads, they say, well, if we don't get any money from the government, we're not going to sign up. Well, that's completely the wrong attitude and the wrong way to look at it. Thanks so much for joining us. Chairman Colin Peterson, House Ag Committee Chair. A top USDA official paid a visit to North Dakota to tell farm groups about the next round of trade aid payments. Another $14.5 billion will be distributed to farmers hurt by the trade war with China. 
Senator John Hoven hosted USDA Farm Service Agency Administrator Richard Fordyce, who explained this MFP program uses a different formula to determine payments. However, he could not say if basis levels were considered. Half the total will be paid at the end of August, with the second payment in the fall and the third in January, if they're still needed. So we signed a trade deal with, uh, with a trading partner um, that, that would affect that commodity, um, say, or the impact of trade to that commodity. It might affect some a little bit, um, but, and, and, and that's, what we'll, that's what we will look at before we issue that second payment. <laughs> Fordyce says most grain farmers in the Dakotas and Minnesota are eligible for $50 to $60 an acre. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll have more from Farm Fest. And up next, we'll begin a series on part-time farmers with a Minnesota man who works his farming around a full-time job an hour from his farm. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Katota Prairie Lodge presents Farm to Table Dinner, August 28th and 29th, 2019. A four-course dinner by Chef Steve Schultz with local beer and special guests from the agriculture community, showcasing the products of area agriculture. With support of Ag Week, join us for the unique dining experience. For more information and reservations, visit cdplodge.com events. Nothing holds more promise than a seed. And when it comes from Peterson Farm Seed, it's backed with a promise from us. We will sell no seed we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. So that growers like Pete can keep a promise of his own to build a profitable business with his kids and give them the opportunity to one day do the same with theirs. <laughs> Grow your promise. Grow Peterson Farm Seed. Dig. Lay and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Dakota Fest is back August 20th through the 22nd in Mitchell, South Dakota. Dakota Fest exists to provide you the tools to grow your family farm operation. Network with over 500 exhibitors specialized in row crop and livestock farming. Attend ag education sessions and experience live equipment demos you can only see in person. Don't forget to bring the family for great food and fun kid events as well. Join Dakota Fest this year August 20th through the 22nd. For more information and discounted tickets, visit dakotafest.com. Welcome back to Farm Fest. Off farm income is increasingly important for farmers with low commodity prices. Plus, having another job still keeps many farmers doing what they love. This week, Jonathan Knudsen begins a three part series with a Minnesota man who drives 120 miles five days a week to a full time job that allows him to pursue his passion for farming. It's the sense of, sense of accomplishment when I get done cultivating or planting a field. Evan Grandstrand loves farming. His full-time, off-the-farm job allows him to do it. Grandstrand has farmed his family's land for 10 years. He studied agronomy in college and worked as a crop consultant, but he soon found he couldn't do both. It just got to be too much, trying to... Busy time on the farm was busy time at work, and it, I was just burning myself out on both ends. So he began working evenings at DigiKey, an electronics distributor in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. It's a better fit with his farming schedule. Tough times forced his dad, John, out of farming in the 90s. But John still helps Evan on the farm. I guess I kind of encouraged him to farm. I mean, I thought it would be a great uh, sideline to having a job. Clearly he enjoys it, so that's the yeah. important thing. And I, and I do too, being able to come back out and, and do some farming. 
Evan says DigiKey offers the steady paycheck and health benefits he needs and is flexible with his farming schedule. I try to schedule ahead of time as best I can. They've been very good to work with on that way. We can't always give the employees exactly everything they're looking for, but I think we have a pretty wide plethora of those positions that, you know, work for their lifestyle. Evan says it can be tough, but he has no plans to give up either job. In Stephen, Minnesota, this is Jonathan Knudsen for Ag Week. Jonathan will have more in the next Ag Week magazine and on agweek.com. In yet another chapter in the trade war with China, President Trump ordered another 10% tariff increase on the remaining $300 billion of China imports. The tariffs would go into effect on September 1. The president claims China has not followed through with the promise of U.S. ag purchases. The tariffs were approved back in May, but held prior to the G20 summit meeting between the two presidents. The objective of these tariffs is to not hurt China's economic growth or contain China's development, but to find an enforceable solution to China's market-distorting policies and practices that have harmed the U.S. economy and victimized American workers, farmers, ranchers, and businesses. China has threatened retaliation and already this week devalued its currency in relation to the U.S. dollar. The government also urged state-owned companies not to purchase ag imports from the U.S. One positive trade development is the European Union has signed a memorandum of understanding to allow sales of 35,000 metric tons of U.S. beef under a duty-free quota. The agreement is for high-quality U.S. beef from non-hormone-treated cattle and will be phased in over seven years. However, the move signals an easing of years of restrictive tariffs and non-tariff trade barriers put in place by Europe. It's a win for producers. Uh, granted, you know, the EU is not a huge market, but maybe it's a, you know, got the potential to grow and become a better market. So anytime we can open something up, it's ultimately a good deal. The U.S. Trade Representative's Office estimates this quota will increase annual U.S. beef sales in Europe from $150 million to $420 million in year seven. Still ahead from Farm Fest, we'll look at farm safety. And later on Ag Week TV, we'll celebrate National Farmers Market Week. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage it's the perfect time to get ready for harvest, and North Star Ag has the equipment you need to keep things running smoothly this season. We have a great selection of augers from Meridian and Wheatheart, as well as Batco and Unitube conveyors. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. And don't forget, North Star Ag has Meridian hopper bins for any size operation. See our complete new and used equipment inventory at northstarag.com or give us a call. Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. So when conditions are right, be ready with genuine Case IH parts from Titan Machinery. Only genuine Case IH parts are engineered to keep your equipment running at peak efficiency when you're running around the clock. Don't risk your bottom line with off-brand parts that don't meet the same standards. Visit your local Titan Machinery dealership today to find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value and performance for your operation. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. One of the new features here at FarmFest this year was the Wellness and Safety Pavilion, which featured some live demos. Katie Pinky caught one of them. 
Michelle, there's more than 450,000 youth in America that work on farms, which is why they are a focus of the live safety demonstrations at FarmFest. <laughs> youth in agriculture were the target for the farm safety demonstrations. Probably the largest entity for ag safety right now. If you're looking at youth, the amount of experiences that youth have in agriculture are probably less than what they've had in the past. The best case scenario is accident prevention so it never happens. Just like fire prevention is accident prevention. So if it never happens and we have all of the things in place, we have all of the guards, all of the shields in place and we're not needed, that is probably our best scenario. Key takeaways from the farm safety demonstration includes grain bin safety. We have a mannequin who's actually buried. What we're actually showing to the farmers is the pulley assembly that's up on the top that it will be installed in the new bins. That's from the bin manufacturer. When they go into the bin, it makes it easier to have a harness on and to be tethered to that. A PTO shaft can make eight rotations in one second. The PTO shaft turning at 540 RPM, considering that to be able to get that reaction time, you will not beat it. The most effective way to prevent tractor overturn deaths is to use rollover protection structure. Airbags that will lift the tractor up and be able to get that off the vehicle. Every day, almost 100 agricultural workers suffer a lost work time injury. At FarmFest, this is Katie Pinky for Ag Week. We had some fairly mild weather for Farm Fest this year, but what's ahead for the next couple of weeks in the growing season? Here's our AgriWeather Outlook. Conditions across the lower 48 still remain dry in just a few pockets here and there. Zooming in across the northern plains, northern parts of North Dakota has experienced just a little bit of dry conditions along with just a little bit of moderate drought up near Rugby between Minot to Devils Lake. Much of Minnesota is actually uh, just kind of not included in that, uh, in that drought, the drier conditions, but still keeping an eye on things. Dropping down to the deep south and parts of the southern plains, some mother, uh, moderate uh, drought experience just kind of in, in northern parts of Texas along with the Four Corners region and then across the Pacific Northwest it is pretty dry. It is that time of year where they just do experience some drier conditions but uh, some severe drought kind of between Portland to Seattle uh, and parts of the Pacific Northwest and just kind of the very far northwestern corner of the lower 48. Looking ahead for this week ahead across the desert southwest and some of the mountainous areas of western parts of the lower 48 we're looking at some drier conditions. Up across the northern plains we may just be uh, around average or even and just a little above average across parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota with just some scattered showers and thunderstorms in our forecast coming on up. And then across uh, the deep south and parts of the central plains still looking at a little bit above average to uh, parts of the far southeast. And then as we look toward next week, we could see a little improvement across the Pacific Northwest. We're still dry in the southwest and for the northern plains here, we're looking at maybe a little better shot for parts of North Dakota just from what the pattern is setting up in across Minnesota to see some of those showers and thunderstorms and still some improvement across the far southeast. So the weather pattern this week is going to switch up a little bit. The warm air will stay to the south. We're just in general going to be a little bit cooler coming up as our flow pattern switch to more a zonal flow. We'll be looking at a lot of uh, lower 80s to even some 70s coming up here just in general across uh, parts of the northern plains. Just a cooler August. Across the desert southwest still looking to stay fairly dry. We will be tracking some rain and some thunder coming up here in the days ahead. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment.
How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a renegade. The Summers VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go. All from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Welcome back. The future for low carbon biofuels has arrived, at least in parts of the Corn Belt, with West Coast states like California and Oregon mandating low carbon fuels. That's an opportunity for farmers in the region. EPA Regional Administrator Gregory Sobkin got to see that firsthand on his visit to South Dakota. For years, corn ethanol was charged by environmentalists as being negative to the environment. But farmer Keith Alverson told EPA officials that's starting to change. Historically, they've given us a deficit or charged us for the carbon that they say we emit when we grow corn. But some of the things that we found out on our farm and, and SGSU has worked on, we're realizing that we're actually adding carbon to the soil. Alverson Farms has been building organic matter and sequestering carbon for years through conservation practices like no-till. Now that low-carbon corn is being made into low-carbon ethanol. All the ethanol that gets produced is scored based on how much carbon or how carbon intense uh, it takes and so they attribute some of that carbon intensity to the corn production practice. Alverson's local plant, Dakota Ethanol in Wentworth, is selling the fuel at a premium in West Coast markets like California. They hope that premium will trickle down to the farm. So we don't get to segregate out better farming practices yet. We hope to achieve that someday. While promising, Ron admits the low carbon fuel markets are difficult to break into. They want low carbon fuel, but they would rather keep that money in, in their state and pay, pay their producers to make that low carbon fuel for them. But they've been forced to come to the Midwest. EPA's Gregory Sopkin says this is a promising area to help revitalize profitability for farmers. I'm very familiar with credits that have been created uh, to, to manage carbon. Um, and, you know, that's been done through renewable energy, and it, it seems to me that the same type of parallel system can be created for the agricultural community. A plan he pledged to help with through resources in the agency. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, for many people, it's a chance to buy some fresh food from the farm. We celebrate National Farmers Market Week. With the all-new GreenFit system from Reichardt, plug and plays finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance systems to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com slash GreenFit. Dakota Fest is back August 20th through the 22nd in Mitchell, South Dakota. Dakota Fest exists to provide you the tools to grow your family farm operation. Network with over 500 exhibitors specialized in row crop and livestock farming. Attend ag education sessions and experience live equipment demos you can only see in person. Don't forget to bring the family for great food and fun kid events as well. Join Dakota Fest this year August 20th through the 22nd. For more information and discounted tickets, visit dakotafest.com. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Katota Prairie Lodge presents Farm to Table Dinner, August 28th and 29th, 2019. A four-course dinner by Chef Steve Schultz with local beer and special guests from the agriculture community, showcasing the products of area agriculture. 
With support of Ag Week, join us for the unique dining experience. For more information and reservations, visit cdplodge.com slash events. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. In 1994, there were less than 2,000 farmers markets registered with the USDA, but today there are more than 8,600. This was National Farmers Market Week, and as Katie Pinky found, those figures show a growing reason to celebrate. I met Amy and Nate Hoffman of Vergas, Minnesota. They're first year vendors at the Fergus Falls Farmers Market, and they are selling their beef to bring more value to their farm and also value to the consumer. What are some advantages you see to being at the farmer's market? Um, the biggest thing is that we can sell our own product and uh, cut off the middleman. Typically we market through the sales barn or um, direct to um, somebody like Tyson Foods, but we decided to try to do something direct to consumer. Um, after you know running the numbers in a nice Excel spreadsheet, we decided that um, doing it directly to consumers um, we can actually make a little bit more money. Why did you ultimately decide to make the commitment that you're going to be at the farmer's market in Fergus Falls, Minnesota on Saturdays this summer? Uh, you know, we just, we were looking for a local place to sell our meat and do more to get our product direct to consumers and get more value out of our product. You have to be here for consistency. People want to see you every Saturday. That consistency will build our uh, customer base and then that customer base will ultimately allow us to market more direct to consumer. So it was processed, you said, in May and now you did more in July. Yes. Yeah, but it's probably safer at the farmer's market yes. than you have it in freezers. Uh, actually, uh, USDA standards and regulations, we have to get it frozen. We cannot do um, fresh beef. So a fun marketing way is freshly frozen. <laughs> how would you like to encourage farmers to maybe think differently on how they market their, their products? The biggest thing is just um, letting other people know how the product is raised and, and how we do it in an efficient, um, economic way. The Fergus Falls Farmers Market is open on Wednesdays and Saturdays, Saturdays 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They are open into October. It's a great time to get fresh fruits and vegetables, baked goods, and of course, buy some beef. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV from Farm Fest. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.